at the nexus of science and spirituality is wonder. You know this, that sciences are so important in the whole school program, STEM, it matters. And all of our current technology, iPad, phones, no matter what, based on science, important. But sometimes over science, we miss soul and spirituality. And the interesting thing is that wondering, being curious, asking questions, will help us in both realms. Being curious, fascinated, looking deeper into science, how the universe is made up, how atoms function, gives, you, gives me a wow. Or looking at the space telescope, Webb uh, telescope's picture is like, Wow! And the same applies to our souls, to the spirit of when we look deeper, when we open up, and that's where soul, spirituality, and the arts come in. Music and the arts, it's the other half of ourselves. It's almost like we don't live with one brain, Left brain, science, right brain, arms, spirituality, we need them both. And where they link is wonder, being curious. Now, I think that's what the wise ones, or in the Bible, the Magi modeled. Wake up! That's what the angel tells them in this sculpture, and it's going back to the 1100s. You see, I received this, card, this Christmas card from my mentor in Germany. And I love it because sometimes, even though we're awake, we go through the motions, we go to work, we move in our daily habits, we're not fully awake. So it takes signs, it takes angels, it takes the awareness to wake up to the reality. There is a star, there are signs. There are signs if you pay attention and are curious. Maybe the star's outside, maybe the star's inside, and that's why we have the stars on the Christmas tree and the stars around. They're the star of Bethlehem. It's the star that guided the magi, the wise ones, the scholars, to get going. It's the star, the signs that can get us going if we pay attention. Now, if you look at the picture uh, uh, one more time, you will see that the wise men or three kings, as they're often depicted, are representing three different ages. One of them is younger, one of them is middle-aged, and one of them is a senior. Why? Because during all of our whole lifetime, we're invited to wake up, become fully awake and receptive, curious about the signs and wonders that God creates in our midst. Now, this very light is coming in very different ways to us. It's not just one way. So, how does the light come? On one hand, it comes through our brains. And that's where the Statue of Liberty, the Enlightenment, comes in. Use your brain, like be aware, think about it. Don't act like a brainless human being. So we need our head, we need the thinking, we need the IQ, it matters. But the head is not enough. We also need the heart, the emotional light. And that's where researchers many years ago already said, you may be smart, you may have your IQ off the charts, 
if your heart, your emotional, your feelings is missing, you're not getting very far. So the feeling, the heart, the emotional light awareness we need. And then also light in our body. Someone said we're like a living furnace because we fuel our body and it's burning. There is an inner light, there is a furnace, there is fire in our bones. And if any one of you has ever been so tight and gone for a good massage or taking a warm bath to relax, you see the soul is in the body and the body keeps the score. So there is something in our bodies that gives us messages, the inner fire that we access through yoga, through massage, through body awareness that is how we connect to the light too. Well, these are the typicals we think of, but not enough. There is psychological light coming in because we have a spirit, we have a soul. And sometimes you feel like there are two souls in my chest. I feel torn apart. There is this tension. On one hand, I want to do this. On the other hand, I want to do that. And then I feel like, or in a deeper sense, I encounter people who have just a conflicted personality or a conflicted soul. You heard that saying. So there is insight on a soul level how we understand. Then there is also insight and light coming to us on a sociological or family level. And the African tradition or the word Ubuntu, you may have heard of it, means I am because we are. We do not live as individuals disconnected from the whole community. That's why family matters, our community matters, our network matters. <coughs> It's the interpersonal, we are a we. We're not just an I that matters. And then, of course, we talk about the light, a spiritual light coming our way. The soul, and that's the illumination of the Holy Spirit that works in us and through us. And the Bible scripture uses that as the fiery flame that are coming, uses it also as the dove coming and inspiring us. And some researchers worked about the near-death experiences and the out-of-body experiences, the golden world. There is something of that on a spiritual level it, that can break in and surprise us. Phew. But when we come down to the light itself, there are... The image that I'm getting is we're drawn to the light. There is something when we walk around, we're drawn to it. And we have symbols that invite us to move toward the light. Star of Bethlehem, but also the candles. You know, pure rationalists would say, what the heck? Why do you use candles? We have light here, electricity. But the candle is more than just flipping a switch. The candle, and we have two candles, are representative of two things. One is, Jesus is the light of the world, and at that time, well, didn't have switches, so Jesus shining, burning in our midst. Jesus is the light, and Matthew says, let your light shine. So. That's why there are two candles, one for Jesus, one for us, and also for Jesus being fully divine and Jesus being fully human. And those sides in Jesus come together, and that's how we are too, fully human and meant to become divine, connected to the light of Christ, the light of God. Now, it's not enough to see the star. You know that. Uh, we need to get up and get going. So, give you an example. I want to le lose five pounds. I sit on the sofa and meditate. And I go to my resolution to eat more chocolate. 
it won't happen. You gotta get up and go. You have to pack up, and that's what Isaiah is calling us to do. Arise and shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord rises upon you. So the light, the glory of God is coming and rising, but we got to get up too. Arise and shine from couch to 5K. It doesn't happen on its own. You got to lift. Your couch potato doesn't do it. Yeah. And then when we get up and get going, it's always a journey. And the image, we're invited to the journey. You get up, you get moving. And it's a watercolor painting by Jacques Tissot. Jacques Tissot went, traveled at the end of the 1800s to the Holy Land. He wanted to get a good understanding of what is the scene? What do the people look like? He had conversations with a rabbi. He did research because he wanted to depict the scriptures, the biblical stories, as good as possible. And he has this magnificent opus of 350 watercolors depicting the life of Jesus. And this is how he saw the scriptures. And so when we get up and get moving, and move to the Christ child. Our scriptures tells us they were overjoyed, bubbling over with joy. The wow, the chills you sometimes get, isn't it like you are, whoa, feel it in your body, the sacredness, the awe, the wonder of, behold the beauty of the Lord. It's like, bigger than we are when we connect to the greater power. And the picture you see comes from the Jesus Mafa tradition. Mafa is a tribe in Africa. And together with the Josephite, a Catholic order who went to the Mafa tribe, they tried to figure out how can we depict Jesus to reflect more who we are. How do we feel closer to Jesus? So they came together and figured out, well, this is how Jesus would appear in our culture. That is who Jesus is for us. And that helps us understand Jesus better too. So they are filled with joy. And then they kneel down, and what do they do? They open their gifts, their treasure chests, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And what really touches me is when you see that, again, you see the three, uh, the three men there, the three kings, the three different ages, stages of life, growing up young, youthful, middle age, and to senior age. And what I see there is the wonderful transformation happening. And I love the senior one, the bald one with a beard. He's kneeling down, he's handing the gift over, and then I see the hand of the baby resting on his head. We are being blessed when we kneel down and offer ourselves to the living Christ. And the deepest insight that I had this whole week over preparing was gold, yes, our gifts, we give them. Frankincense is Jesus means he's a priest, he connects us with God, the living God. What about the myrrh? The myrrh is the bitter standing for the suffering. When we give Jesus our suffering, he transforms it 
into a blessing. Jesus is able to transform our suffering into a blessing when we don't hold on to it all and trying to fix it ourselves, but when we offer it. So what is the vision of Epiphany for our whole year? The vision of Epiphany, Epiphany's vision is, remain curious, pay attention to the signs, ask questions. We are given signs. They're all around us, if we but wake up and pay attention. But that's not enough to have insight. We gotta get moving, we gotta act on it, not just lean back. Do something about us, lean in and get moving. And when you offer yourself the treasure, talent, gifts, remember that you can also offer your suffering to the living Christ, to let the light shine into your brokenness where you're hurting. And in the process, you will be blessed. The 20 star CMB24 is what today many, many, many children in Germany will write on the door posts and the lintels of the doors to those people where they go to sing the Christmas carols. Today they will go. 20 means from the beginning of the year. Star of Bethlehem is guiding us. Christus Mansionem Benedicat, those are the initials of the traditional name of the three kings. Gaspar, Melchior, Balthasar. So for the whole year from 20 to 24, Christ will bless you and may this house be blessed. So as you think of the whole year for you, Isn't that a beautiful way to pay attention, move, and offer to be blessed?